Hello everyone, this is FlowHi117 here, and today I'm going to be doing a review on the Pulso U39 series motors from Monto RC. Specifically their U39M 270kV motor and their U39L 300kV motor. Now the reason I chose to do a review on these two specific motors is because they have a unique kV range relative to their size. Most motors this size don't have a kV range this low, so these motors already seem to have an interesting factor to them along with some other ones that I'll go over in the review. Now I wasn't able to gather much information on these motors before I got them, so I really was shooting in the dark and hoping for the best. That's why I chose the two most different motors out of their lineup. Their U39M 270kV because it's a super low kV, and their U39L 300kV motor because it's the largest of the four motors. So I figured, hey, between these two motors, I'll be able to get some pretty interesting data. Also, I've been looking for a comparable motor to compete against the MN3508 380kV motors from T-Motor. Those motors have been pretty much the most efficient motors for their size range I've been able to find. So, I've been looking for a motor that can give me around the same amount of thrust and do it at a more efficient rate compared to those motors. So anyways, I got my motors in from Monto RC. I noticed they came with these 3.17 to 6mm adapters, and I instantly thought, so I put them to the side and figured I'd open up the packages and check out the motors. The first thing I wanted to do was weigh the motors. As you can see, the U39M 270kV is only 84 grams. That's with the full length of the wires, so it'd actually be a little bit lighter once we cut some of the wire down. Next is the U39L 300kV motor. At 100 grams, it's slightly less weight than the T-Motor 3508. Now since these two motors are so close in size, it's really a great test to see if I had to choose a motor that weighed roughly around 100 grams and I wanted to make the most thrust efficiently, these three motors would be a great match to compare against each other. Not saying that the T-Motor is any better than the Pulso or that the Pulso is any better than the T-Motor. Also these Pulso motors seem to be fairly expensive for their size so I'd like to see how they compare to a T-Motor which is known for having high quality standards. So basically I'm trying to see if you're getting what you're paying for when you buy these Pulso motors. So at first glance at taking a look at these motors, I've noticed that the Pulso motors have very nice and refined edges and everything is very clean on the motor. There's no weird marks or anything like that that would show poor manufacturing or anything like that. So everything seems to look good so far. The next thing I notice is the windings. These motors have super low KV so it means you're going to have a ton of winds. So basically, you know, when you're getting a motor like this, you're not going to see those incredibly perfect straight line windings across the entire thing. I mean, even the T-Motor doesn't have anything like that. It's just because there's so much windings and they're trying to get it in such a small space. So, you know, basically, once you get to a certain point, they're just trying to make winds fit. Okay, now the next thing you'll notice is the U39L 300kV motor is slightly taller than the U39M 270kV motor. Included with the motors are two prop adapters. One is a regular bolt-on style prop adapter that has a 6mm shaft in it, so you can put on you know, an APC prop or a Gropner, whatever style prop you want that has at least a 6mm hole in the middle. Now, that weird 3.17 to 6mm spacer, I figured out what that was for. That's the slide on the shaft because the main shaft is 3.17mm, not 4. Why Pulso did that, I have no idea. But they need to realize that this is America. America. And in America, 4mm shafts are pretty much standard on a motor this size. Basically, if you want to run a T-style prop, which are those flat props with the three holes, typically a 4mm hole on the inside and two 3mm holes, one on each side of the 4mm hole. Um, if you want to run a prop like that, you have to get an adapter that goes from 4mm down to 3.17, which I had to go to a machine shop and have custom made for me. or you can bore out your prop to 6 millimeters, which most people will probably do, and uh, just use the spacer that's included. So, you know, you have two options really, I mean, but at the same time, if you're running APC or Gropner or um, some of the larger actual T-Motor brand props, supposedly they have 6 millimeter holes that you can just basically use right there. You don't have to worry about it. But for those of you that are like me and, you know, you might have bought some RC timer props or some knockoff T-Motor style props, uh, you're probably going to have to either bore it out to 6 millimeters, or go get a custom adapter made that will go from 3.17 to 4 millimeters, like I did. Now before I go any further, I'd like to explain a couple more problems that I ran into if you're going to be using a T-style prop. 
Now, if you're gonna be using a regular prop adapter that it comes with that bolts onto the top of the motor, you're not gonna have any of these problems, so you can just skip over this part. But if you're like me and you chose to use a T-style prop, I'm gonna show you a couple problems that you could run into with these motors. Now, if you see these problems with these motors that I'm about to show you and you feel like writing these motors off is not the motors for you, keep watching because these motors have some seriously awesome test results, so you might wanna watch those before you think about not getting these motors. Okay, without trying to rehash the first problem too much, the 3.17 millimeter shaft is probably the biggest problem, which just, you know, you can fix by adding a 3.17 to 4 millimeter adapter like I did, or bore your prop out to 6 millimeters and use the included adapter. Okay, so the next problem I ran into was the top plate that holds the prop on. Okay, that has a 6 millimeter hole in it also. So basically, even though you can use their 6 millimeter adapter, that adapter could come out mid flight. But chances of it happening are pretty slim because it is a very tight fit and there's no play in there. So I don't really see that happening. However, I feel it is an issue that Pulso should address and people should be aware of. Now if you choose to go with the 3.17 to 4mm adapter like I had made for mine, that same push through problem that I had with the 6mm adapter is now greater with this adapter because as you can see, there's a ton of space around the top ring and the shaft adapter. So the only thing that's holding that adapter in is basically the tension on the prop which this is how I've been flying it and I've been fine. Like I said, chances of it coming out are super slim to none. But if this problem does worry you, you can simply just glue the shaft adapter into the prop and not have to worry about that problem. Okay, so the last and final problem I ran into was the little prop adapter top plate. It has three millimeter holes on each of the sides, yet Pulso uses 2.5 millimeter screws and not three millimeters. So now we have 0.5 millimeters of play going through the prop holes, which are also three millimeters, and the top little adapter plate, which is three millimeters. So why they chose to use 2.5 millimeter screws, I have no idea. They have still failed to realize that this is America. Oh, Captain Awesome. Get back to Saskatchewan, you terrors. Okay, now onto the fun stuff, the thrust test. So for these tests, I use my thrust scale, and I set it to uh, grams, and then I mounted my motor to it, whatever motor I was using, whatever prop I was using, um, zeroed the scale out. I went to my uh, constant voltage power supply. I would set it for either 22.2 volts or 14.8 volts. And as you can see, my watt meter is also reading the same thing, so we know that the voltage is correct. Um, everything's going to be right. Then I would simply spin up whatever motor prop combo on the cell voltage that I wanted to do and uh, just write down you know, the, the watts it's pulling to make that said amount of thrust. I did this for all the motors on five different props on two different voltages. I started out at 14.8 volts and I did uh, you know, all the tests on five different props on each of the motors. Then I went up to 22.2 volts and did all the tests with five different props on each of the motors. So I was able to cover a pretty good range and I, I use 4-cell and 6-cell because I don't think a lot of people have 5-cell batteries hanging around. Okay, so after running all the tests on all three of the motors, on all five props, on both voltages 14.8 and 22.2 volts, I found that the Pulso U39L 300kV motor was the most efficient. The second most efficient motor was the Pulso U39M 270kV. However, even though this motor was second in efficiency, it didn't really make enough thrust to compare against the other two motors. This thing could only make 1320 grams of thrust on a 17 inch prop on 22.2 volts. So I feel like this thing really needs to be spinning at least an 18 inch prop to where you can start making you know, some substantial amount of thrust that can compare to the other two motors. And I don't think it would really overwatt the motor, but like I said, I haven't been able to test an 18 inch prop on the 270 kV motor, so I just want to throw that out there. But basically the two motors that came in closest together and the amount of max thrust that they can make was the U39L 300kV and the T motor 3508 380kV. In this graph I show both motors side by side. The T motor on the left and the Pulso on the right. As you can see from this chart, the T motor is always pulling more watts to make a close or comparable amount of thrust compared to the U39L. The U39L has a nice linear thrust curve where the wattage stays pretty much a nice slope up where the T motor starts to shoot up rapidly as you can see when you start getting into the higher thrust values. Now if you notice, I show the T motor making 1700 grams of thrust and 1840 grams of thrust. Well, 
those are actually overwatting the motor even though t-motor says it's 310 watt motor it's definitely not i was smelling the motor burn up and i put a temperature gun on it and it was spiking up there pretty quickly so um even though it says it can do you know 1840 it can if you just like pumped it really quickly the thrust but at the same time it's not going to be safe to even go probably over 1650 grams of thrust with that motor now i checked the pulsa motor at full throttle and i ran it for a while and it literally can do full throttle on a 17 inch prop on 22.2 volts and produce 1740 grams of thrust consistently without even coming close to burning up pulsa's design of the huge open bottom and pretty much the whole top being open in a very flat style pancake motor really helps to dissipate the heat that builds up in the motor and it can get rid of it really fast so as of right now, I really don't know what the max wattage of this motor is. Pulsa doesn't really give me any information on that either, so I really can't tell what this motor is really fully capable of doing. So far, I really like the numbers that it's doing though, and it's definitely the most efficient motor in this size range I've found. Now I don't want you to think that since the T-Motor is running a 15 inch prop and the Pulsa is running a 17 inch prop, that if I threw a 17 inch prop onto the T-Motor, and drop the voltage down that it's going to be just as efficient because it's not i actually ran the 17 on the 3508 and it was just as inefficient so really the pulso motor is a more efficient motor all around regardless of the prop size okay now let's get the motors on an aircraft and see how they sound As you can see, they are extremely smooth. I mean, that's probably the best sounding motor I've ever heard. Now, Pulso says all their motors are dynamically balanced by professional balancer, Shank. I don't know if that's a guy, a girl, or a machine, but whoever it is or what it is, it does an awesome job because these motors sound amazing. As you can hear, it's incredibly smooth and very, very quiet. I'll back away so you can hear how quiet it is. The uh, camera probably picks up the sound a lot more than it than what it actually sounds like. I mean, it's really, really quiet. I don't know how loud it's going to be on the camera, but man, you wouldn't even know that's there, really. So I'll lift it up. And then I'll put it into a hover. That's kind of creepy because uh, if you weren't paying attention, you'd never know that's there. That is extremely quiet. So far, um, these U39L Pulso motors, the 300 kV, these are awesome motors. Uh, a lot better performance-wise as my uh, 30 compared to the T motor 3508, 380 kVs that I was using before. Um, they're more efficient. I showed the charts of that. Um, swinging 17-inch props also is, you know, it's better all around. It's quieter. Bring it down here. Okay guys, now it's time to wrap up the review on these Pulso motors. I love to say these motors are just a perfect motor all around and you're not going to have any issues with them. However, they do have their few small quirks when it comes to bolting a regular T-style prop that has a 4mm hole in it. However, if you plan on running the regular prop adapter that bolts onto the top, then you're not going to have any of these problems, and basically this motor is going to be perfect for you right out the box. But the downside to it is, if you do want to use a T-style prop, you're going to have to do a little bit of work to make it work. Unless you buy a regular T-motor prop that has a 6mm hole in it, then you'll be fine. As far as the motor goes, I think the motor itself, the core part of the motor, is designed beautifully. The open aspect to the motor really helps to dissipate the heat fast, so you really don't have to worry about your motor burning up ever as long as you run the setups that I've shown. You definitely don't have to worry about it. Another great thing is the balance. The balance is freaking perfect. I mean, 
I have flown a ton of motors and by far this was definitely the smoothest motor I have ever put on my thrust stand and ever flown. As far as motors go of this size, this is definitely the most efficient motor I found in this size range. Yeah, as you can see here, I flew out 3.14 miles straight out and 3.14 miles straight back on this Team Black Sheep Discovery airframe, which all of weight right now is 2150 grams. So it's not the lightest aircraft, but it's not the heaviest either. And it really is a good aircraft to show you guys since this is a pretty popular airframe, what some of the things you're able to do with these motors on an aircraft like this. So, you know, if you're one of those people that are just going to fly an ultralight aircraft for super long duration flights, then these motors are going to be even better and you'll definitely have no problem flying over an hour. That'll be easy. So now that I'm done testing these motors, I would highly recommend them to anybody looking to do some long duration flying or just some long distance flying in an aircraft around this size. You know, these are the most efficient motors I've been able to find me personally. There might be other motors out there that are more efficient than these. I just haven't run into them yet. So, you know, take that for what it's worth. As far as the price range goes and what you get, I do feel the price is justified at what it is. I mean, you are paying a premium to do some extreme things. You know, if you're just an average flyer that just wants to go out and fly around your local park for five to 10 minutes, then there's a bunch of other motors that can do that at a cheaper price for you. However, if you're like me and you like having confidence in your product that you're flying with, then these motors are gonna be hard to beat because they are built extremely well. You know, you can go out and fly them and not have to worry about it, the motor burning out or something like that. Or, you know, these motors are built very, very well. Another thing I like about these Pulso U39 series motors is they come in a variety of KVs that you typically don't find in any, any other manufacturer right now. Um, you know, T Motor, Cobra, Sunny Sky, um, you know, all of them, they all have pretty much the same motor. They're all the same KVs if you look around. I mean, there really isn't too many people doing something different. So it's nice to see somebody stepping out of the box for once. These motors have been great motors to test and, you know, see how much more efficient a motor can actually be that's in the same size and weight range compared to other generic brand motors that are out there right now, you know. So all in all, I'd like to thank Monto RC for sending out these motors so I can test them. And everyone else, if you're looking to try out some efficient motors, definitely grab these from Monto RC while they're still in stock. And uh, thanks for watching. As always, rate, comment, and subscribe.